Man, I'm telling you, these are so dope. Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Chris. Welcome back to the official weartesters.com YouTube channel. Today we got a detailed look and breakdown on the best foam posit of all time. You can't tell me otherwise. It's the original, the Dark Neon Royal Air Foam Posit 1. Now before we get started, if you could do me one quick favor and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, we are on the road to 1 million and we are so close we can taste it. But we can only do that with your guys' help, so if you love our sneaker content, then it would be really beneficial to us if you can actually do that and hit the subscribe button on top of all of that. If you're already subscribed, hit the like or dislike and please leave a comment for engagement. Engagement feeds the algorithm. The algorithm feeds other people's YouTube feeds that may be interested in stuff like this. Ooh. And with all that out of the way, we do have a quick word from the day's sponsor. And that just so happens to be the good folks over at Arbit. And in case this is the first time that you've heard about Arbit, it is a completely free app available both on iOS and Android. And what it does is that it aggregates all of the prices for the sneakers that you might be interested in all in one place. So instead of bouncing around trying to find whatever it is that you might have missed out on, Arbit has everything all ready to go for you where they list it. All you got to do is search the shoe as well as your size. And then you can see what all the different prices are on all the various platforms right in one spot. But one of my favorite features of the app is actually their future price predictions. This is gonna save all of you people with FOMO. So instead of rushing out to purchase the sneaker that you just lost out on on release day, they're going to show you the future predictions of what that particular shoe just so happens to be doing. So you can see its highest price and you can see that it's gonna drop off tremendously once people start getting those shoes in hand. And if you're not ready to buy something or you're looking for something that's a little bit older, all you gotta do is search for it and add it to your watch list. Where you can do pretty much the same exact thing where you're gonna be watching its prices, whether it goes up or down, and it'll show you all the different prices over at all of the different various places to buy. It's super simple to use, and again, it's completely free, so all you gotta do is click one of the links down below in our description box. It'll send you over to the App Store where you can go and download everything, and hopefully you can stop spending so much money on stuff that you missed out on because, well, it's worthless. Now, these guys, they come in a regular box. Uh, they don't release here in the States, I believe, until September. However, they've already released overseas. So if you wanted to use today's sponsor and actually find the best price, you can. Or I grabbed mine from uh, BSTN, which I, I swear that you're not allowed. That's a retailer, by the way, uh, overseas. But Nike has a thing where like you're not supposed to be able to fulfill orders from you know overseas. I don't know if that's still the case or what, but it went through. Clearly, I got the shoes. So yeah, I paid retail. Retail. retail is not cheap, that's for sure. Phone posits have gotten way more expensive than they ever were, and this at the time, 1997, was the most expensive shoe ever, like at the time, until the Jordan 17s with the briefcase, then those were. But these were so expensive that only one person in my entire high school actually had a pair of these, just one. These guys right here are different than all the past releases of this specific colorway, the dark neons, for one simple reason. These are made more like the sample version of the shoe that was actually featured in the promo ad, you know, the old all white simple shoes on the floor or whatever that, you know, white background is with the swoosh and then the telephone number at the bottom. These are made like those. How are they different from the regular release? The carbon fiber first off is different. It's actually checkered or they're all checkered, but this one's black and blue checkered. So the regular ones that actually hit retail were just always all black. These guys different. And last but not least, it was actually the tiny little baby swoosh right there on the toe. And baby swoosh. I think that's what I'm gonna call those from now on, like baby knife. Shout out to Deadpool. Oh, speaking of nerd stuff, new channel, available now. It's called Some of My Favorite Things. And if you also like my shirt, it's available now for a limited time. So go grab it while you can. But anyways, that baby swoosh right there was originally just straight up all white. And in the promo ad, it had that border of blue. I know that that's a very small change, but it is a change nonetheless. The shoe itself was designed by the legendary Eric Avar. He's most known for designing all of Kobe's shoes, but he's designed multiple shoe lines and just shoes in general aside from that, the pennies being the other most notable where he took care of all of them from one through four, including these. These are not part of that numbered series. So some people don't consider the phone posit to be an actual penny, but this particular one was just for him. Anyways, the outsole, it's gorgeous, it's clear, and it's got herringbone from top to bottom. You got an awesome one cent logo right there at the base as well, and you can see the carbon fiber shank wraps 
wraps all the way around the midfoot, almost like a full midfoot chassis. In addition to that, it extends throughout the entire shoe, much like the Air Jordan 11, so it's more of a spring plate and offers exceptional torsion support. Not just that, but the midsole itself is double lasted, which means that it's inside of the upper, which is why it's all like one piece, you can't really see it. And that also provides support. It also is supposed to make the, the upper closer to your foot, like fit like this, you know what I mean? It's sort of like, uh, we just talked about it because you know we bulk film, but uh, I was talking about the adaptive fit strap. So it's kind of that type of concept, but it was way before then. So a double lasted midsole while being inside the upper is allowing the upper to really cinch itself onto your foot and close the foot onto the footbed, keeping you fully secured and locked in. Now when it's housed inside a foam posit material, I mean, you're not going anywhere. These are pretty stiff. You gotta break these in. However, I was told that these new versions of the foam posit, and I, I can't remember which one it started with. I wanna say it was the metallic reds, but they are made differently than they used to be. So the material of foam posit, which is a polyurethane, believe it or not, it starts off as a liquid polyurethane, which most polyurethane does. They normally will pour it into a mold and make a midsole out of it. But instead of doing that, they actually pour it into a mold that makes the upper shell, which is crazy. But anyways, I was told that the polyurethane mix is different, like the actual science of everything. And so these, and you can actually feel it, they're a lot softer than original foam posits and some of the past retros. So these should break in a lot sooner or a lot quicker than previous versions. <laughs> They also feel a lot lighter than they used to as well. Like for a foam posit, this doesn't feel in hand like a brick. It feels like most other regular basketball shoes. Now, like I was saying before, the cushion itself is a double lasted system. So the midsole is inside the shoe. And then inside of that midsole is a full length top loaded zoom air unit. Yes, full length top loaded zoom air unit. And underneath the heel, it's another zoom air unit. So hoo -hoo, zoom for days. It's and awesome. And just in case you needed a visual, don't pay attention to the four foot one. That is not there, but one of those is in the heel. Then you have a full length unit right on top of that. Shut up and take my money. The ice day is back to what they always should be. It's that synthetic new buck. This is what I prefer. The tongue is an inner sleeve or an inner booty. It's from heel to forefoot. This thing doesn't have the best lockdown, but it is what it is. It's a very stiff shoe at first. Once you break them in, they do get better over time. And that's only if you're like willing to actually put that work in. If you were just wearing them casually, most people wear them loose anyways. So I wouldn't really worry about that. Just make sure that you wear a high-ish sock because there's a little square of stitching back here where they stitch on the pull tab, the you know inner sleeve to the actual like rear collar. And if you're wearing no-shows, the guy who made these hates feet and wants to see them die. But outside of that, that internal booty is full mesh. So that's where the ventilation is actually coming from. However, when you have a shoe like this, the original concept is that the entire shoe is supposed to mold to your foot. So with that, you need more heat and you do need more moisture. Therefore, it limited the overall ventilation and everything that way the upper can actually do what it's supposed to do or what it was intended to do now as far as sizing is concerned they do fit true to size they're slightly snug that's intended you're supposed to break these in but if you're a wide footer you may want to go up half a size just know that if you do that you're definitely going to get heel slip in the back because well they don't fit you lengthwise but yeah true to size good to go they're super comfortable like that zoom air is something else and just in case you were wondering this is the insole is it great no does it get the job done yes why because there's so much in here you know what i mean like you don't need at least most people don't additional support in there but if you do you can always take that out swap it out for anything else that you need but with that being said do we happen to have a question of the day if you could have one shoe come back every two to three years with necessary interior tech slash luxury improvements what would that shoe be you finally are picking this guy's question mm -hmm. This man has been leaving this for <laughs> weeks. He's been so good. I know, he's been adamant. He's like, bro, I know you're gonna pick this one these times. <laughs> these questions are user submitted, so if you have a question of the day that you would like answered, feel free. It could be a behind the scenes question, it could be a question like this, it could be a random question, even though those aren't my favorite, especially the would you, would you rathers. Those are definitely not my favorite. Boo, you whore. So if I can have a shoe come back, every two to three years, but with necessary improvements. Mm -hmm. So essentially a pro tro. What shoe would it be? Is that, was, was yeah. that the question? By necessary improvements, what are the parameters? Are we talking about just Hey, I know you load my parameters, but uh, are we talking about performance or are we just like, hey, there's new something? Hey, we found this kind of cushion that makes it feel better. So like for me, 
For example, if I was gonna re-release an Air Jordan 4, white cement colorway, the best one of the bunch, even though the black cements are beautiful too. But if I was gonna re-release those and I would remove the outdated polyurethane and replace it with a more modern foam, like something as simple as just basic EVA, or if it were Nike, Phylon, then yes, I would do that. Would I change out all the other components? It depends on what my, my intention for the product is, you know what I mean? Like if it is essentially a pro tro or if it's for performance, then yes, I would want to remove the air in there and put in zoom air or something else like anything else whatever it might be i would want to do stuff like that would i want to change things like the upper like we've seen in the past where they like make a fly knit version of whatever no i wouldn't want that i still love like leather based products even if they're synthetic leathers and stuff like that as long as they're made with quality versions of those materials i think that that's great certain necessary improvements yes for comfort yes insoles <sighs> yes like i don't even i still don't know what the no brand comes with a good insult, you know what I mean? That should be like something that they actually like work on and work within the budget. Was the question... Is that your final answer? Like the what? Jordan 4 white cement? Yes. <laughs> I was going to say, was it supposed to be like what shoe would it be? Yeah. Yeah, it would be that one. Okay. But maybe you disagree. And if you do, leave a comment, be detailed, say like what shoe it would be, what it would have. Sound off below and let us know. But with that being said, thank you so much for being here. We greatly appreciate you guys. Uh, if you haven't already, again, go ahead and grab this shirt. It supports our channel directly. So we appreciate it. And uh, with that being said, I'll catch you guys on the next one. So until then, y'all have a good one.